Hi, you guys. Today I'm going to show you how to solve a quadratic by square roots. And what's important is for you to know when we're going to use this method. In standard form, right, this is standard form here. Um, and we have an A, B, and C. If we're missing this, if we don't have a, an X by itself, then we can use this method. All right, and this method is wonderful, especially we have to use it when we don't have that. So here's an example. What are the solutions? And if you remember, solutions are when a parabola where it goes through the X. Okay, so we're, sometimes we're gonna have two answers, sometimes we're gonna have just one, and sometimes none. Okay, and they could be flipped around too. Okay, so I don't have an X, so I can go ahead and solve this. I'm going to square root both sides, right, to get rid of the squared. So x equals positive and, whoops, and negative 7. So I have two solutions. It's going to go through the x-axis at 7 and negative 7. Okay, and I really just care about my solutions. So you guys should be able to do these two problems right here. To solve for x, I have no b, I have no x, so I'm just going to go ahead and square root both sides. So x equals the square root of 169 is positive and negative 13. All right, so two solutions again. You must list both. All right, same thing here. We're going to square root both sides. So x equals, oh no, I noticed that underneath this radical is a negative number, and I can't square root a negative for right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say there's no solution. So what does that mean? That means that we have a parabola, and it doesn't go through the x at all. Okay, that's totally doable. So it just, our answer here is no solution. Don't put zero, because then it means it goes through it at zero. So you want to say no solution. All right. Now these problems, tiny bit more complicated, but really not too bad. You notice there's no x, so once again, we can just solve it like how we were doing them before. You even got into really understanding quadratics. Uh, we're going to divide both sides by 7 because I want to get this x squared by itself. Right, Divide both sides by 7, so x squared equals 161. Uh, so x equals positive and negative 12.7. So sometimes you're really gonna have to look at the instructions. Are they want, Do they want you to keep it in simplest radical form? And if that's the case, you would put a positive and negative on the outside, 161. Um, and I don't think we can simplify that. Okay, so either of those answers would be okay. Okay, here we're gonna divide. And so you can't just look here and say, oh my goodness, they're gonna, I'm gonna square root a negative and so it's going to be no solution. We actually have to divide both sides by negative 3. So then we would just get a positive 8 here. Okay? So x equals the square root of 8. Remember to put your positive and negative on the outside because that's two different answers. And if it said round, then you're going to say that it equals positive and negative 2.8. Okay? So either of those answers, depending on if it says keep it in simplest radical form or... Uh, to round it. Okay, so these are just like solving equations, like what we've been doing for so long. Add 5 to both sides, whoops, divide by 3, subtract 17, whoops, You guys to see what I'm doing here. 209, whoop. 209, subtract 17. <coughs> now, just in case you didn't know how to square root, it's this button right here. And the, the calculator is not going to give you both versions. So you have to know that when you square root a number, it's automatically positive and negative. Okay? All right, and so now a word problem. I wanted to just show you a word problem, and I just drew a little picture. Um, didn't make you guys write down a whole bunch of stuff, but basically we have this tower, and the height of the tower is X, and then there's this, they call it a guy wire, going from the very tip of the tower straight down to the ground, and this is also X. So the height of the tower in this is the same thing. The guy wire is 20 feet, and we have to figure out how tall it is. Well, this is a right triangle, 
So we could say, well, let's use Pythagorean theorem. So we know that, you know, it's Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and c is the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Okay, so a is x, so I'm just going to say x squared. This is x. x squared equals 200 feet squared. Okay, so now I have two of these. So I have 2x squared. Just so that you guys remember how to square stuff, you can use this button right here. Okay, now I'm in the same as what I was doing before. I'm just gonna divide by two. And then square root it. Uh, feet squared. Now, really, if you think about this, you, technically you should say positive and negative, but then reflect back. Because when I square rooted that, I got positive and negative. But let's let's think about this situation. Every time we have a word problem, I want to go back and really see what are they asking me. They're asking me for the height of the tower. Well, does it make sense that the tower is a negative? Can the tower be a negative 141 feet? No, that doesn't make any sense. So that means X is just the positive version. Okay, do not write both for this one because it is just the positive because that's the height of something. Okay, have a good day, you guys.